Wake up. Wake up, Alice. Look, I'm glad you followed the breadcrumbs, Mr. McPherson. I wanted you to witness my latest masterpiece. Wake up, dear. I wouldn't want you to miss the pain. This painting is called Death Do Us Part. The woman in this painting appears to utterly disregard the suffering of the man kneeling on the ground beside her. Again, we see the recurrence of a dark tunnel, with an ominous figure lurking in the shadows. It seems as though Ackerman is attempting to recreate a moment in his childhood with undertones of rape and suffering. Note the position of the man in this painting. He is vulnerable, weak, and exposed. Is this how Ackerman himself felt at the time? Cleansing of a soul. For the first time in Ackerman's work, a woman is depicted in a seductive manner. She floats on the canvas, her red cloak rippling in the wind, in contrast to the dead calm of the background. Red, representing passion and seduction, dominates the foreground, but is surrounded by ominous tones of dark purples, grays, and blacks the colors of death. The woman's eyes are missing, perhaps representing increasing confusion and anger towards the women in his life. Bridge over troubled water. The woman in the foreground seems troubled and stares directly at us, seemingly unaware of the turmoil surrounding her. The vast and tumultuous sky, usually representative of freedom and openness, instead feels oppressive and looms eerily over the landscape. Is this Mark trying to get back at his mother? This painting is called Streets of Prague. Ackerman only lived in Prague for a few years. We can see the recurrence of a dark alleyway. Look at the colors in this painting. It's almost as if the walls are bruised and battered. Clearly Ackerman had a very negative view of the city. A sinner's pardon. The woman depicted here is clearly in a vulnerable and submissive position. She clutches herself as she struggles to achieve forgiveness. Perhaps one might see this as Ackerman's vision of how his mother should have asked for forgiveness for failing to protect him. The first one is called Abandoned. To the right, you can see a woman lying down, drunk, seemingly unaware of her surroundings. In the center of the picture are two eyes, eerily cutting through the darkness. We know that Mark Ackerman was abused by his father and felt that his mother, who knew what was happening, stayed passive and let the abuse continue. This is mirrored in the painting where the woman depicted seems unwilling to react to the approaching danger. This one is called The Pupil. The title suggests that Mark connected with the subject of this painting. Although trapped in his own prison, Ackerman was able to find escape through his pupil represented by the light reflecting through the window onto the subject. He is using this man to escape from his own prison. The title is Mindless. This man is literally mindless. Note the stitches on his forehead where he was presumably lobotomized. This represents Mark's worst nightmare, being trapped in a prison of both body and mind. Although standing in a corner surrounded by darkness, an open window sheds light onto the scene. In a cruel irony, however, the subject is unaware of this window to freedom and remains a prisoner. Ah, Beatrice. The woman depicted here, a nurse, 
seems to represent Mark's ideal woman, and perhaps she was. Attentive, loving, and seductive, she is surrounded by angelic hues of white. Her skin tone is rich and alive, in contrast to his earlier works. This one is called Dr. Hyde, and is the first in his L.A. series. We know that Ackerman was committed to a mental hospital in the 30s. The man in this painting represents Mark's psychiatrist. It is a caricature of a dishonest man, whose gaze is masked behind thick glasses. The painting has an air of condescension. Look at his smile. He looks like the village idiot. It is obvious that Mark had no respect or admiration for this man. This painting is called Moonshine Traffic, his second painting in Chicago. One senses that Mark is comfortable here. The sun is rising, pushing out the darkness. Notice the warm oranges, yellows, and reds. Perhaps Mark is finally at peace and feels at home in Chicago. Uh, this one here is called Disturbed Sanctuary and is the first in his Chicago series. One of the unusual aspects of this painting is the perspective from which it is created. One feels as though Ackerman is an unwanted guest in the room, almost hiding behind the curtain. The woman shown in this painting appears blissfully unaware of him or the darkness that surrounds her sanctuary of light.